Hello everyone. Well, welcome to week six. We are very quickly moving through this course. Uh, we do have some really interesting assignments, I believe, left, and uh, uh, we'll talk about those in a moment. So first off, what I'd like to do is summarize what we learned so far, which includes APA formatting, citations, the reference list, uh, learning how to critique an article, learning how to critically think about the information you're reading, and uh, in, in being able to apply ethics and, and academic integrity and, and some of these things uh, throughout what you're doing in your academic program. All of this information we've covered so far is what I might refer to as critical information in your program. We've really tried to limit the amount of content you have in this course that uh, oh may not apply as much during your program and really focus on the material that really applies almost every single week. So again, perhaps I'd recommend at some point reviewing through what we've gone through so far and, uh, and uh, you know, really focusing on in these last couple weeks applying some of the methods that we've discussed. So as an example, when you will be writing your, your discussion, remember how we've talked about how to organize that discussion and what to write and providing an introduction, conclusion, and some of these things. Uh, if you apply this information consistently, Throughout your program, you will find that you will do very, very well. For this week, our topic is multiple causation, and I've added here as well, bias. We should always be looking for bias uh, uh, due to its ethical consequences and a number of things. Um, so that's what we'll be discussing this week. Uh, I do have some interesting uh, examples for you of how multiple causation and, uh, can be used and even to an extent manipulated uh, to, to perhaps make you feel again a certain way. So what are we talking about here? Critical thinking. This is what we've talked about in the past. And if you do not have that skill or if it's not well developed, you may miss out on opportunities to do so. So first off, let's talk about uh, bias, which I think is rather interesting. Again, I'll go back to our author because there is just so many examples I see that I just cannot pass up on them. So um, for example, well, when we're talking about bias and as you're reading your articles and reading the various textbooks throughout your class, once again, information that is not provided many times uh, can have as much of a negative impact on you and others as is the information that is provided. I have several examples to, to point out to you to demonstrate this, including one from the text, which on page 148 of our text, the author comments about uh, crime rates and how certain people of certain political philosophies believe certain things. And what I found what was interesting is again what was not said because the author states that conservatives uh, basically focus perhaps on personal values and personal character which determines criminal behavior. Uh, what is not said, so this can give an impression that the those conservative beliefs are rather limited. However, uh, the author could not be farther from the truth. Uh, part of the, the conservative philosophy is actually uh, what he states before that, and that is that socioeconomic status can definitely impact crime rate. And so that is not stated here, so it can give the, uh, give the reader a certain impression. Um, in this particular example, what probably should have been discussed is rather than choosing uh, various political philosophies, the author could have very simply focused on on how all of these variables, again, we're, now we're talking about multiple causation, all of these variables can impact criminal behavior, including socioeconomic status, uh, uh, unemployment rates, as well as uh, upbringing and so on. So. Uh, I just thought that was kind of interesting because once again, for the trained eye, you can very clearly see a bias in the way the writer uh, gives examples and so on. Now, let's focus on some other examples uh, from the news media that I discovered. First off, what I find interesting is in, in this particular example is again the the intent 
is to perhaps be somewhat positive. Uh, the article was to show that African Americans have improved their graduation rates by 2% from 60 to 62%. So the author was being somewhat, somewhat positive, which is okay, but, but in the grand scheme of things, the, the negative ramifications of this could be significant. And the reason I say that is because if you looked further into the statistics, you would have actually found that where this particular study was done, there has been a, a very significant uh, increase in the amount of Somali students. Um, these are individuals that are either uh, Somali American or individuals that have, that have moved from Somalia uh, with their families and are go now going to school in this area. And what was interesting is their graduation rates are about 15% higher than other than African Americans in other groups. Uh, primarily those uh, in this particular area would be almost exclusively those individuals that have lived uh, in the area or in America for multiple generations. So the reality is that most of the African Americans, in particular in that in that bracket, uh, actually uh, more than likely had a decrease in graduation rates during that time if it were not for that significant influx of Somali students that uh, performed just significantly higher, those rates would have went down. And the, again, the, the impact here could be on uh, whether it be funding or, or, or uh, uh, the outcry of individuals to, to perhaps do different things in the schools to, uh, to bring up graduation rates and so on. So the, uh, I just thought this was really an interesting example because, again, what was not said is critical here. Uh, it's critical to understand this information. One final example I thought would be kind of fun to look at. Um, I'm always picking on, on how individuals are portrayed in elections. I found this one interesting because the article said that only 25% or one in four thought Donald Trump cannot win in November in the election. If you would have looked at the actual survey, you would have found that very interesting because the people that were asked the question were actually given four, uh, four items they could respond to. One was, can win in November, but the others were share my values, tell it like it is, or can bring needed change. So what's in interesting about that is they had some fairly, in some ways, equal choices to choose from. So the, the, the reality is more than likely any of those responses would receive roughly 25 or so percent. So from the beginning, the, the design of that particular survey was made so there really could be no um, perhaps positive looking response towards that particular candidate. So in summary here, we can see that first off, multiple causation, there can be many different variables that contribute to uh, research and to the statistics that are generated and so on, such as in the graduation rates of African Americans. There are other issues that are often uh, uh, perhaps either intentionally hidden or just maybe the researcher does not recognize. And then we also need to look for bias, and that could be intentional bias or unintentional bias, but we need to be wary of that because it may very well be that the author is not even considering the, the bias that they're showing when they're writing, so they may not be telling us everything that they perhaps should be. And again, that might be unintentionally or intentionally. So again, keep, keep all these things in mind. This, this, uh, this, these forms of critical thinking will greatly help you in your program going forward and in many ways will change the way you see certain things. So uh, thank you again, and I look forward to future chats.